Many people know Pat Tillman as a former NFL football player to an Army Ranger who was killed in Afghanistan. To many, he is a symbol. But to me, he was a husband, a best friend, and a partner for life. As I'm sure you can imagine, it's very difficult for me to stand up here and speak to you about his person that I knew so personally. And I'm not really going to speak too much personally about him today, but there are a few things that I want you to know about Pat so that you can better understand why it is that we chose to honor him in the way that we are with the Pat Tillman Foundation and how we hope to continue his legacy past what plaques and statues are able to do. At the simplest level, Pat was a man with enormous talent. He was an incredible athlete, fiercely competitive, and intense both on and off the field. His passion and intensity honor gave him great respect from both his teammates and fans alike. Pat was a man whose athletic ability was matched by a deep and complex moral and intellectual side. This wasn't always obvious in his public persona, but the people who knew him best knew he never accepted things at face value. He actively sought with an open and inquiring mind to think things through and to know and understand the world around him. He wanted to know what was right and to do the right thing. He wanted to act on what he had learned and keep learning. He wanted the power of his actions to evolve with the depth of his knowledge. I'm not saying by any means that Pat was a perfect person, but he always tried to do the right thing. Not that he always did it, but he always tried, and he was the first to admit when he didn't. He always held himself accountable to his actions, which is why he knew that his understanding of himself and the world had to keep growing. When Pat left the NFL, many people saw this more complex side and respected the courage of his actions. One of the questions I most frequently ask is why did he do it? Why would he leave an NFL career to join the Army? Well, I can't speak for Pat, and I'm not really going to speak to the decisions that he made because I had too much respect for him to do that. But what I will tell you is he was the type of man who stood up when something needed to be done. And like many Americans, after September 11th, this took on a much more important and urgent meaning in his life. As many of our military families know, the decision to serve is never easy and never comes lightly. Many things have changed since Pat decided to join the Army, and unfortunately, leadership on many levels has come into question. The current administration and congressional polls are at an all-time low. Business leaders are plagued with scandal and failure. Our educational systems are challenged with lack of student performance and funding. We are in need of authentic leadership on many levels, social, economic, and political. This is in part by the Pat Tillman Foundation's main initiative is a leadership direction program at Arizona State University. Our goal is to encourage the future development of leaders and foster in them curiosity and a hunger for knowledge, intellectual and moral courage, and a commitment to work with others in a respectful and challenging way. Please let me introduce Alex Garwood, the Executive Director of the Pat Tillman Foundation, to speak a little bit more about the program in Arizona State and the Foundation. Thank you. It's an honor to be here, and especially to follow my, my friend Marie. And Pat and I were smart enough to marry in the same family. And I, I would share with you a story, I don't know how many of you have been to Arizona or to Sedona, but it's a beautiful place. And I had the, the fortune of going there with Pat and Marie and her sister Christine, my wife. And we went there, and there's three stories I would share with you while we were there. And Sedona is this, as I said, a beautiful place, and it's got cliffs and rivers, and it's, it's, it's really, you should know, it's, it's amazing. But there, there's a river that you can walk along the path. Or, as Pat suggested, you can try to go down it from rock to rock and not get your feet wet. He looks at me and he says, hey, what do you say we try to go down in the next mile or so and not get our feet wet? And you know, I'm accepting the challenge. And it was incredible. And as Murray said, he was a gifted athlete. He was incredible. And to be behind him and watch him do physical things that you, you shouldn't be able to do. I mean, rod jumping from one rock to a log. It was amazing. And I'd seen some of those things before, but I was just so taken with it. 
I was a pretty decent athlete myself, but let me put it this way, I was sopping wet. <laughs> but here's the thing, the, the physicality of watching him was beautiful to watch, and he had an amazing way of moving, but the best part of it was that his brain was working. And watching him figure out, okay, I'm going from this rock to that rock to that log back to that tree. And it was like watching chess, okay? Pawn, rook, queen, checkmate. It was incredible to watch. And, I don't know, I was in my early 20s trudging behind this guy and to, to, I mean, I, I stopped, like I said, completely wet and just watched and just was almost dumbfounded. I remember that. The second thing is about halfway down the river, he says, hey, I'll be right back. And I look over and he's on the top of this cliff. And it's, I don't know what, you know, the top of these windows, fall, high enough that you don't want to fall. And I look over and he's there and he jumps to a tree. And he just jumps and catches on the tree much more graceful than I just did, but he catches this tree and just shakes down. And the jump was far enough that, again, you had to think about it, but he kind of walks back to the water and just walks by me with a little nod of the head. And then, whether he shared it with me or whether it was Marie's prompting, he'd been there a month before and had sat up on the top of this stupid cliff and thought about it. Because as I saw him do it, I was, it, I was taken aback. It was reckless, but it wasn't. He thought it through, and it was incredible to see. So, in you know, a little smirk as he went by, and then the last thing, there was a, a, another jump that, that you jump from. There's a beautiful bridge there, and it's I don't know, maybe maybe twice this building. It's it's safe because it's an, it's an easy jump over the rock and the water's deep and everything. But it's definitely so physically not hard, but mentally very much, as was evidenced by the fact as we got to the top where you jump from, and there was a number of five or six high school kids that it was clearly in their head, and they weren't going. Pat politely says, hey, you guys can go, and in typical high school fashion, like, whatever. You know. So Pat goes and does the backflip off the rock. And then Marie went and jumped. And then Christine went and jumped. And I went and jumped. And whether they were shamed into jumping, or they were inspired, and I choose to believe firmly that they were inspired, all of those kids went. And so that, that, that little story, or three stories from Sedona of, of watching him think his way through, of testing himself, and then the ultimate test, and not being happy that it took him so long to do it the first time when he jumped from the cliff, and then jumping in and then carrying forward and that inspiration. So it's an honor for us to be here. It's an honor to be in a room, including students who have joined the Clinton School who are stepping up to do something. We're going to make a difference. And is jumping off of a cliff or to a tree or down a river, is that authentic leadership? Perhaps it's an example that Pat, as Marie said, embody authentic leadership. And so I commend those that are in the room who stepped up and done that. And, and that falls to us as this foundation, this, this, this arrogant mission on our part to try to carry forward Pat's legacy. But to, to instill that authentic leadership. And Marie talked a little bit about it. it did, I mean, what authentic leadership is, being intrepid, being intelligent, being accessible, being action-oriented, being accountable. Committed, passionate, thoughtful, constant, genuine. I mean, Pat was so genuine. He was one of the most genuine, genuine people I've ever met, and he couldn't fake that kind of genuineness. Genuineness. And whether it was looking in you, in you in the eye as you spoke, or waiting for your answer, or actually listening to your questions. I mean, an incredible thing. So how do you carry that forward? How do you embody that? And as Marie said, having the ability to do the right thing, but then the want to do it, or moreover, taking the time to figure it out so that you knew the courage of your convictions, that you knew what you were doing was right. Not necessarily right for you or what was right for me, but right for him, which is powerful. And it was an earned conviction on his part, thinking about things with his eyes wide open, reading, asking opinions, getting a take. I mean, so that when you are stepping up to be a leader, it's authentic. You've thought it through with your eyes wide open. That's everyday leadership. That's authentic leadership. Frankly, that's Pat. And as also, as Marie said, there's, there's a lack of, of that leadership, you know, whether it's from our enemy within families or from the top down, both sides of the aisle, however you want to look at it, there's a lack of accountability. So there's this gap. And so our job with the foundation then is to take this inspiration from this incredible man who showed us on a daily basis with through his individual actions, with his relationships, and then with this ultimate snap, authentic leadership, and, and to bridge that. But where do you get it? schools that teach it? Are there programs? Are there other leaders? And that's not to say there aren't any leaders. And so that's our job with the foundation. And so the way we did that is we created a foundation to carry it forward. We thought about how would we do this? 
And the program, as Sarah said, is at Arizona State University. It's fitting. It's all modern. But one of the things to remember is that he graduated from the business school in three and a half years. He did it with a 3.86 GPA. He did it while playing major college football. He did all these things. But one of the things the professors there will tell you is one of the best students they've ever had. It's powerful. So it's fitting that we have it there. So our program at Emory Bridge, our mission statement, that's, that's what we're doing. And I'll talk to you a little bit about our vision of where we're taking this next. But I'll spend the next few minutes telling you a little bit about the pedagogy, our way of teaching, of, of how we instill or attempt to instill effective leadership in these students. And as, as we said, we thought about it long and hard, how to get here, how to do it. And, and I won't detail it. But trust me when I say that we sat around through lots of hard conversations. And hard because it's not easy. And how do you take it and carry that forward? But moreover, we found something that very much feels like that. And it's powerful. So here's how our program works. It's called Leadership for Action, as Marie said, Sarah said. At the base level, there are students, and they're typically business students, but from all walks of life, who apply for this program. They go through a rigorous application pro process, and then a group interview process that includes Marie, includes me, and we sit there and we grill these kids, and it's extremely inspiring. But once they've been through the program, excuse me, through the selection process, they then earn the right to be called Tillman Scholars. So as Tillman Scholars, they go through this experience. And the experience has a number of different vehicles for, for, for doing so. And the first is a classroom setting. It's a two semester course, as I said, it's in the business school. But in the classroom, it's, it's utilizing a different pedagogy. It's, we're, we're addressing the problem and making sure that education isn't fractionalized, that you're no one standing up there saying, look, read this book, take a bunch of notes, and then write it down on the test. It's, it's far more than that. It's learning to use your intellect and using your heart. We're making sure that in this, in the classroom part, they're trusting that the human experience is a holistic thing, that it's a learning environment that encourages diversity and, and a number of different things such that it's, again, authentic or genuine. And at its core, our Leadership Through Action program, I mean, it's inspiring people to make positive change. It's developing those authentic leaders. It's encouraging them to step up and actually do something. They're tackling really real world problems. We're promoting lives of passion, integrity, and independent thinking. Very much like Pat. One of the things that was incredible when he helped you find an answer, he talked it through with you. He helped you figure it out. He didn't say, hey, Alex, I think you should do X, Y, and Z. He helped you think it through so these students are thinking of their own volition and what they want to do. So critical thinking skills with social skills, of, of interpersonal skills and self-expression, and big questions of who am I and what do I care about and what am I passionate about, what do I need to work on? All those different things in this holistic environment through these two semesters. In the class, it's extremely open, as you might, might imagine, and the students are able to create an incredible community amongst themselves. And they, they come from all walks, where some are athletes, some aren't. Some are business majors, some aren't. Some are young, some are old. And a lot of them, it's incredible, because you see that perhaps they wouldn't have been friends outside, but they've created an, an amazing knit, or a, a tight-knit community. And I'll talk a little bit more about that in a little bit. But some of the things they also do in this classroom experience, they drum, they write down their thoughts, they share. Many students have never done that. Something that Pat did all his life. They interview a leader, but moreover, they bring back what they've learned from that leader and share it with the students in the class. So it's a learning experience for everyone. They also do interviews with people that they know in order to get a feeling back for, I mean, we all have our own self-perception, right? And being self-aware, but asking you what you think. And it's an eye-opening experience because you know how college students are, they often think they know everything, but they learn that they don't. They do book reviews, they pick their own book and again share with the class, practicing their presentation skills and, and being emphatic in what they're talking about. They also write their own eulogy. Now it's fun because it helps them set what kind of accomplishments they're looking for, but also it reminds them of the mortality that is life. They write down a future day fantasy of where they're going to be in 10 years, where they're going to be in 20. They write their mission statement for their life, artistic reflections, a number of these different things that they do. Again, making it much more than just the classroom. Another vehicle that these students are able to, to be a part of are outside the classroom. I mean, aside from the class being outside sometimes and sitting and talking and so forth, they have these incredible opportunities and experiences that they're able to do because of the connections through the foundation. As an example, in the first year, the students were able to go to a Medal of Honor. And they got to sit in a room with recipients of the Medal of Honor. And 
I don't think the two students that got to go had any idea what a Medal of Honor meant, what the sacrifice it would require, and they came back. I think shocked is perhaps the right word, but then, importantly, they then shared it with their fellow Tillman scholars. So that kind of experience. They also are announced each year at a halftime of the Sun Devil game. Is it a big deal to be on the field? Maybe for some, but also they're standing in front of their peers, and he recognizes this prestigious thing. They were able to participate in the Cardinals game where Pat was honored into the ring of, into the ring of honor. They retired his number. They got to see these different experiences that perhaps they wouldn't get to do. And so I talked a little bit about this Tillman community, and that's made up of the Tillman scholars. And it's the scholars from the first several years that have said, once a Tillman scholar, always a Tillman scholar. And they've lived it because they come back. Some of them serve as mentors. They're coming back and helping with the experience because like the first students from the Clinton School, they realize that they're the start of something incredible. They're the start of something that, that we're all going to know about. And so they've given back. But there's also mentors that are part of this. I'll tell you a little bit more about the mentors. But the teachers in the program, guest lecturers, foundation, friends, family, all these people that have this opportunity, this, this incredible community. And remember, there's so many folks out there that have been inspired by Pat who want to do something. And so with the foundation and with our program, we're able to connect some of those dots, if you will. So the mentors in our program are also key. And they're today's leaders. And they're, they're given the opportunity to be some mentors, but to pay it forward, to give back, to shape the leaders of tomorrow, however you want to look at it. And they're in a one-to-one -one basis. And this is something that in our first year, quite frankly, we didn't do well. But we learned from our mistakes. And perhaps it's, it's like jumping from the cliff to the tree. We learn better how to do it. So we have a little bit more structure. We have mentor captains, such that these students who are working to be the leaders of tomorrow, authentic leaders, can learn from current effective, excuse me, authentic leaders. And it's been incredible. And we've actually had to turn some of the mentors away because so many want to do it. But what we're able to do then is keep them in the stable, if you will, to be able to match the interest. If you have an interest in PR, we have a student who has an interest in PR, but then she gets to work with someone who's run their own PR. It's, and you can see how you know, working through your passion can work. And then the last piece, we learn a little bit about the, these projects that the high school students do. And it's about 40% of their time being outside of the classroom. Our students, these Tillman scholars working with their mentors, then find a project, find a problem within the community, something that speaks to them, and then they do something about it. So like I said, this authentic leadership, you can read all these books and journal and do all that, or then you can step up and do something about it. So these students are required to do so. And the projects that they step up to do are about something that they care about. And whether it's local or international, that is up to them. And they work to address it, they create a business plan, they create a program, and then, if needed, we provide them funding to do it. I'll give you two examples. The first is from a student named Jordan. Jordan, an amazing young man, huge, huge passion for basketball. Also loves kids. And so he saw an even downtown Phoenix in the Hispanic community where these kids didn't have a whole lot to do on Saturday nights. So he put together what he called basketball and bargain. And he had these students come in, these little kids come in, and they practice their basketball skills. And they dribbled, they passed, they were a team. But then they did some inter intercultural things and some teamwork and, and share. And his highlight of doing this was a little kid pulling on his shirt and saying, after asking for his autograph, when are we going to do this next year? Just so inspired. And you see Jordan, he talks about it. I mean, he's practicing some of his skills and putting together a business plan and, and selling it and doing all that he needs to do. But he's going to do it again next year. That's authentic leadership. And he needed $500 to do it, so we were able to provide that. And another, that's a, on, on a local scale, on an international scale, one of our other students, his name is Vahi, and he's from Niger. And he's actually started a for-profit company called Hotel Solutions that they're figuring out how, with a machine, to take the moisture from the air and turn it into bottled water. His goal then is to eliminate the drought. And it's so intriguing that they've met with Al Gore and, and I, you know, he's an incredible young man. I don't know where they're going, but I know they're someplace incredible. So those are some examples of those projects that students do. So the summary then of this experience, there's four distinct things. There's those Tolman scholars. So tomorrow's leaders who are better equipped, who have figured out a lot about themselves and are experienced. So when they join our world, and join our society, they're better off. So that's the Tolman scholars. The second then is the Tolman mentors, today's leaders being able to give back, as I said. The third Projects, each one of the students doing a project, making a difference in their local community or nationally, like for he, like Jordan. And then fourth, the funding for that. Well, as I said, we're into our third year. It's, it's been extremely powerful. 
how we're doing it. So then our vision of, of where we're going, how we're going to expand it, how you can help, we're broadening our program at ASU, but we're also broadening it nationwide. And the goal then is for us to create the preeminent undergrad leadership program in the country, but moreover, the preeminent, preeminent undergrad authentic leadership program in the nation. You know, the namesake for here, President Clinton, long resume of incredible things, incredible attributes, all those things. One of the things he has on his resume is, is Rhodes Scholar. So our goal then, you know what it means, it's a powerful statement, our goal then is for you to be able to see Tillman Scholar on someone's resume and know what that means. And part of this program will be expansion of Arizona State, as I said, but also pulling from schools like whether it's Arkansas or Rutgers or UMass or Washington State, it doesn't matter. But bringing these students in and creating a scholarship program for these Tillman Scholars to be able to develop their authentic leadership skills. And I take back the, all right, I take us back kind of to the beginning when we talked a little bit about being in Sedona. And I think about whether it's a metaphor for life or, or for our foundation, but I, I think of going down that river and testing things and figuring out what we were trying to do and getting our feet wet for sure, but figuring out those pieces that worked. And then trying out our program and jumping to the tree, I mean, it makes a lot of sense. And then inspiring, and that's with our Tillman scholars and, and, and others that we've been able to connect to. And it's been an incredible thing. So I would ask you, the next time you have a chance to go down a river and get your feet wet to it, Next time you have a chance to jump from a cliff to a tree, provided it's safe, do it. But also, when you have a chance to jump from that cliff, be inspired and do it, and even consider doing a backflip. Thank you very much for your time.
the Supreme Court. Alex, could you repeat that question? You couldn't hear that. So the question, the, the question involved transformative leadership and, and, and transactional leadership, and it's interesting. Uh, we have two PhDs who run our program. I'm not one of them. And that book is, is actually one that Laura, one of our PhDs, has used. And so I can't even that one try to, to address the differences between the two. But you talk, he also asked that there's a lack of a spark, that, that people have a hard time getting started, if you will. And so how do we, how do we share that? And, and my answer to you is that. And when these students are sitting and participating in the class, but in this experience, they're it's not just pat, 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 pat the whole time. That's not the point at all. I mean, the, the program is about themselves. It's about them finding what they're passionate about. And so the different exercises and such that we talk about, they do. But we also periodically show examples of that, whether it's some videos that we have or different quotes that he said. And we use that just as kind of an interjection. And what we've also seen happening, as I said, the Tillman scholars in the previous years, they didn't know what to expect in the beginning. But now they come back and share it. And then the Tillman mentors so... I said earlier that Pat's leadership, his authentic leadership, just his whole personality was very contagious. So the ultimate answer then is that leadership interaction is in that contagiousness, if you will, that how do we then spread it? And that's a big mission for, for us to do. And perhaps it's with the Tillman scholars that come from the University of Arkansas or from Rutgers as we expand. So how's that for not answering your transfer? <laughs> you did a great job on that. Hi, my name, my name is Ogoy second class of the clinical school and I like the, the fact that your program has a continuation not only you inspiring these young leaders but you giving them the tools to actually set up the projects. Could you speak about uh, that aspect of it? How do you do it as an organization? Uh, maybe you support them in going out to the community. So, so one of the things that, that we have are, I mean as part of the pedagogy and the curriculum that the students go through, as an example, we help teach them how to write a business plan. But we also have guest lecturers come in and talk about this as plan and, and, and we also we had a, a gentleman come in who runs entrepreneurial competitions his name's Troy and he came in and he helped teach them about here's your one minute elevator pitch you know I, I'm doing this basketball program it's about kids I need 500 bucks so I can have milk and cookies when they're done and I'm sure it was better than that because he's very funny but but so that's part of it is is providing them tools, whether it's how to write a business plan or presentation skills, or also helping them realize what they already have. They just need to real. They need to understand it from from themselves, from the journaling and what makes them tick, what their passions are. Because it's part of the transformative leadership is that they're trying to figure out who they are. And remember, these are. I mean, some of them are freshmen, but most of them are juniors, and at that age, and they're 22 or 23. Even though they think they have all the answers, they don't. And one of the things that the class does is it helps remind them that, they're, that, that the answers are within them. So it's, we try to provide them as many, many tools as we can, but also remind them that a lot of the answers they already have, if that makes sense. Okay. Okay. Now that your program is geared toward college and, and things, but there's a lot of kids that know Pat Tillman as Pat Tillman the athlete. Will your forum ever go to, say, junior high kids, high school kids, to introduce them to the leadership and get them on the right track? That's a great question. So our, our flagship program is at Arizona State with college students, but we also have a very similar program at six high schools in San Jose. And that is on the model of mine, too. But it's, it's, instead of doing individual projects, it's doing group projects. So we have that at six high schools in San Jose, and also at six high schools in the Arizona area. So this idea, to your point, the idea of authentic leadership, of, of bettering yourself, of learning what makes you tick, about understanding what's the best thing to do and then stepping up and doing, you can be 35, you can be 27, you can be a college student, you can be a high school student, you can be graduate students in Clinton school, or you can go to junior high. So the answer, our focus is at ASU, a little bit with the high schools, and then expanding through colleges. That's not to say down the road that, that this lesson can't. How do students involve themselves in the diplomatic and the political situation with such an emotional situation so recent that's, that's occurred and using the Tillman as a foundation for education? So how do our students talk about it? How do you use that in such a recent group? 
I, I, what's amazing is that our, our group of students, I mean, they're young and old, athletes, not athletes, some of them have been in the military, some have And this past year, we had two Marines in class who had just gotten back from Iraq. And so you had men who actually been shot at talking with college students who you know, were doing peace and I mean, The point is, is it created dialogue. And they have the ability to, to talk about hard issues. And following up on that question of, so many people are afraid to ask questions. So many people are afraid of the answers, and you just kind of go through by reading the book and writing the answer on the test. Pat certainly didn't do that. He asked the questions, and the adage of only ask questions you want the answer to. He certainly wanted the answers. So in our class, we worked very hard on that experience to get the students asking those questions of themselves, but also in this different group. I mean, what an eye-opening experience for a college student who doesn't know squat to listen to Marines who just come back from collegiate. So it was a, it's an impressive dialogue that they have in a very open environment with no right or wrong answers, certainly, but they've developed this trust amongst each other. And now granted, that conversation probably didn't happen in the first week. But remember, they're in this experience really forever, but they're in this experience for an entire year, so that happened later on in the year. I want to commend you for setting up the foundation and emphasizing leadership. I think one of the important qualities that Pat had was courage. To me, that's what's missing in a lot of young people today. I'm curious, how do you emphasize and teach Courage. I can dodge a transformational leadership question that I can't. But perhaps it's an incredible, I mean, that I, we show as many examples of positive people who had courage. And whether it was Pat or others, we share as many examples as we can. And that's part of the reading process for the students. And they get to select biographies of people they're inspired by. And, and they have that opportunity. So it's a reminder. And, friend next to you mentioned the lack of spark. I think, to your point, maybe perhaps so many people don't know about courage because they're not sure that they can even have it. So, I'm not a big fan of the word hope, but perhaps we're providing them the impetus to find their own courage. So, you know, Bob was ready to help, but frankly, we haven't taken him 